Freedom Kids. I am so glad that you are joining us today. We have an awesome service planned just for you. So get up on your feet and let's get ready for some praise and worship. Matthew. Of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right, get ready.
Just do it. Oh, hi kids. I love that song, Just Do It. I hope you love it as much as I do. Now, get ready for the Word of God. I am so excited today because we are bringing you a Spitty Skit Story. Hey kids, hope you guys had a great week. Today, I would like to talk to you about telling others about Jesus. Jesus gave us an amazing gift when he died on the cross. Shouldn't we want to share that with all of our friends and family? I know I do. We should share it with the whole world. There's a verse in the New Testament, the first book, Matthew, chapter 4, verse 19. Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Jesus said that. But Miss Danielle, how do we how fish, do we for, fish people? for people? Come on, somebody. Jesus said I had to fish for people. Come on, somebody. I caught somebody! I caught somebody! Whoa! What is that? Whoa! What are you doing? Hey! Hey! I'd like to tell you about Jesus! No! No! Don't run away! No! No! Come back! I don't think that's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying that we should share Jesus with the whole world so that they can also be saved and be a follower of Jesus, just like us. We can tell people about how amazing Jesus is, how much he loves us, all the things that he wants for us, all the good things. Sometimes just being loving to people, being kind to them, is an even better way to show them Jesus. You know, it's, it's a cruel and mean world sometimes out there. We have bullies, we have mean people. Sometimes somebody just needs a good friend, and that's a great way to open up conversation about Jesus. So just imagine the impact we would have if we shared Jesus with people, maybe our neighbors, our friends, or the whole world. So just imagine if you, one person, told one other person about Jesus, and then that person told somebody else about Jesus, and so on and so on. This could be the domino effect. Now just imagine if you, as one person, told two people about Jesus, and from those two people, they told three people about Jesus, and then four people, and then four more people. Let's see what kind of an impact that would make. Wow, that's a lot of people. That's why Freedom Church of the Black Hills exists. We are here to love God, love people, and love our community. We want to tell everybody in the Black Hills, in the whole world, about Jesus, and how much Jesus loves them. In the New Testament, uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 42, it says, From house to house, they continued to teach and preach the word of God. And what that message was, Jesus is the Messiah. Miss Danielle, Danielle, what does what Messiah, does Messiah mean? mean? So, Messiah means promised one or savior. In the Old Testament, we see promises of God's Son and how He would love and save the world. So I want to challenge you guys this week to tell somebody about Jesus. You know, maybe try to make a new friend. Everybody's going back to school. You're going to be meeting so many new people. If you don't feel comfortable going up to somebody and saying, Hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. Just like I said before, go up and try to be somebody's friend. If you see somebody being lonely, we all know what it's like to be lonely. Go up and make a friend with somebody. You know try to build a friendship, build a bond, and then eventually you can work into telling them about Jesus. And then one day, when we're all up in heaven, you can be partying with your friends with Jesus. I hope you guys have a great week. See you guys later. Miss Danielle and little Danny sure knows how to do a speedy story. Now, let's look at how Jesus fished for men. Jesus lived in a town on the shores of a big lake called the Sea of Galilee. It was a fishing village. One day, as Jesus was walking down the shore of the lake, he saw two men in a boat. Like many of the village, these were fishermen. They were tossing their nets into the water for a catch of fish. Their names were Simon and Andrew. Come, follow me, Jesus called out to the men. I will make you fishers of men. Would they come? Would they really leave their nets, 
their boat, and maybe the fish they just caught? Didn't they have jobs, goals, dreams? But without even hesitating, Simon and Andrew got up, left their nets and jobs behind, and followed Jesus. Then Jesus, Andrew, and Simon, also called Peter, continued walking along the shoreline. There in the distance, they saw three men in a boat, fixing their fishing nets. These men were James, his brother John, and their father Zebedee. When Jesus called them, they responded. Immediately, John and James dropped their fishing nets, jumped out of the boat, and left their father Zebedee. Jesus' call was profound, and though they had never met him, God's power enabled them to respond to his call. These ordinary fishermen were embarking on a journey that would change their lives forever. Jesus could have called any person of stature or leadership, but instead he called lowly fishermen. He knew that God's power would be greatly displayed in these ordinary men. In a few years, they would become the messengers to spread the gospel to all the nations of the world. A great task indeed. In the end, Jesus chose 12 disciples. These men would be scholars, learning from Jesus for the next three years. He would teach them about God, obedience, and love. He would explain to them why his coming was so important. Their sole aim would be to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah, him crucified and resurrected. The names of the 12 disciples were Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. That's all for Freedom Kids today. We hope you enjoyed it and that you have a great week. Now, go tell someone about Jesus. Jesus.